This is the Amazon here in Colombia, and this is the city of Leticia in the state of Amazonas in the extreme southern tip of the country in an area known as the Three Frontiers. Here you can visit three countries, Colombia, Brazil, and Peru, all within about an hour. This is one of the rainiest places on the planet. The weather here seems to be on a loop. One minute it rains, an hour later it's sunny, an hour later it rains, and that repeats day after day. This is one of the many port towns on the Amazon River, and one of the only ways that the city supplies itself with everything it needs to thrive and survive is by small fishing boats. People here live a simple life, making a living primarily from what bounty the river has to offer, which means most people are fishermen who every day bring their daily catch to the local markets here in town. This place is truly remote, and therefore this region of Colombia is unlike any other region in the country, and that is certainly true with its cuisine. Here you'll find the flavors of the Amazon that you won't find anywhere else, making this what could be the most unique foodie haven on earth. Here you'll find fish unlike anything you've tried before, along with the usual meat dishes prepared in a way that is unique and as wild as you can get. So in this video, I'm on a quest to find these flavors of the Amazon in a town as wild and gritty as you'll find along the second largest river on earth. And I'm on a quest to find Amazonian foods so wild and untamed that they truly bite back. I'm Dave Kaufman, and this is Dave Kaufman Eats the World. My search for the most unique Amazonian cuisine begins on the gritty streets of Leticia, a town so remote it is not connected to the rest of Colombia by road. The only way to get here is by boat or by plane. In a place as wild as this, it didn't take long to find this place, Terras Amazonicas, a little bar and restaurant serving the most authentic Amazonian food in the city, surrounded by Amazon themed decor right down to the fishing nets and armored catfish on the ceiling. This was exactly the kind of place I I was looking for, and the food was exactly the kind of food I was looking for. So right here we have two different dishes that are basically as Amazonian as you can get. In this plate we've got a sampling of everything Amazonian. We've got beef, we've got chicken filet, we've got calabresia, and it's smothered in sautéed vegetables and pieces of paraku coated in flour accompanied by french fries and green banana rounds, which are basically plantains. Right here, we've got two fillets of Araparaima, which is the largest freshwater fish in the world, found right here in the Amazon. Whoa! This is about as Amazonian as you can get. So we're gonna start out with this Araparaima. I've never had Araparaima before. I've never caught an Araparaima before, yet. But we're gonna try this out. Mm, that is really interesting fish. Usually we like fish because it's flaky, it's tender, it's delicious. This is really compact. The consistency is more of more of like meat than fish. It's really compact, but it's really flavorful. And the way that they pan sear this and cook this here really adds to the flavor of this fish. This is really interesting and delicious fish. But right now we're moving on to this plate. And we're just gonna try out one of the pieces of beef here. Mm. So my first inclination is beef jerky tastes very different than a piece of steak, obviously, but somehow this tastes like beef jerky, but tender and juicy like a steak. It really has that flavor of beef jerky. That is really delicious meat, but now we're moving on to the chicken. And that looks really tender, really juicy. All right, let's try out this chicken here. Mm-hmm. That chicken is very moist, very flavorful. And again, when you're eating here in the Amazon, you're gonna get different flavors. So foods like beef and chicken that we know exactly how it's going to taste, here in the Amazon, it tastes a little bit different and dare I say a little bit better. They have different spices that they cook their food with, different ways in how they cook the food. And so when you're biting into a steak or you're biting into chicken and you expect it to taste exactly like beef or chicken everywhere in the world, somehow here in the Amazon, it actually tastes just a little bit better and a little bit more flavorful. All right, so let's move on to the pork sausage here. So the sausage here is Brazilian sausage and a couple of blocks that way is Brazil. We're gonna walk over to Brazil in a little bit here, but 
there are so many different flavors happening with this sausage. It's not like any sausage that I've ever tried anywhere in the world, but so far the main courses of each of these dishes is amazing. We're gonna move on to the fried plantains. So the fried plantains are a little bit green, and what they do is they prepare it just before it's ripe, and therefore we get this kind of yellow-green coloration to it. And fried plantains, if you go further north into Central America, they're gonna taste much more sweet than I expect these to taste. These are gonna probably taste a little bit more doughy and a little less sweet than fried plantains into Central America. All right, let's give these a try here. Mm-hmm. Just as I thought, they're not sweet at all. They're very salty, actually, and they kind of have the consistency of kind of a densely packed bread. And you can just taste the hint of flavor of that plantain coming out in it. These are two really amazing dishes that you're gonna find if you come here to the Three Frontiers area in the Amazon. We're gonna finish this off, and then we're either gonna go to Brazil, or we're gonna go to Peru, or we're just gonna hang out here in Colombia. So Brazil and Peru will have to wait for a future video because just outside of town, we heard of a cozy little roadside restaurant by a lake that we had to check out that cooks up regional offerings in a very traditional way. Here the roads are lined with food vendors and restaurants, and on the shores of this popular cold water lake, we found a typical Amazonian restaurant. This place is a popular place amongst the locals where they find a cool haven from the grueling Amazon heat. There is always activity here, from people swimming and enjoying their day, to the local restaurant's chefs preparing the ingredients to their dishes by washing them clean in the river, to people trying to catch that night's dinner selection. Everything they serve in these restaurants is procured locally, mainly by the bounties the river and the rainforests have to offer. These are simple folks living a simple life, and the food they serve here reflects that lifestyle. So when you come to a roadside restaurant like this in Colombia it's a little bit difficult to navigate through it all because right over there is a kid selling a bunch of different foods right here in the restaurant but that's not part of the restaurant you have to sit down here and order from those guys over there then they bring you food and then you go to that kid over there and get snacks which we're about to do but first they have served this really amazing looking soup but look at this it is chock full of corn on the cob we've got potato in there this orange looks like a piece of tomato, but it's actually a plantain. It's like a banana. And this is a traditional Colombian soup, and it's cooked over a wood fire in the back. This looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna try this out. Mmm. Mmm. That potato just kind of melts in your mouth. This broth is really thick. There's all sorts of different spices and all sorts of different herbs in here. There is a, like a different flavor with every spoonful that you get. I'm gonna try to find, here we go. All right, this time I've got a big chunk of that plantain. We're gonna try this out. Mm. So the broth is like a beef-based broth. And so you taste that beef-based broth, but then you have that sweetness with the plantain. This is really unlike any soup I have ever tried before. And this, again, is a traditional Colombian soup. So when you come to a traditional place like this on the roadside, the first thing they're gonna serve you is this traditional Colombian soup. This is absolutely amazing. So we're gonna go over, talk to this kid, and maybe get one of his snacks over there. We're gonna try that out. Uh, like a churro, but flat. but flat, a flat churro. Cuanto? Cuatro? Okay, uno por favor. And then he gives it a little slathering of condensed milk for a little sweetness. And we are good to go. All right, muchas gracias. All right, I just pulled over to the side of the street here. Pulled over, I mean walked over here. I don't even know how to eat this thing. I mean, you just break off pieces of it, I suppose, and just try it out. Here we go. Mmm. That condensed milk just gives it a nice sweetness to it. It really does taste like a churro. It's just flat. And every one of these little stands here sells these on the side of the road. I saw these and I just had to come over and try one of these. I can see why Colombians who are just walking from La Tisa down the street to the resorts or home over there would stop by and pick up one of these really inexpensive treats. These are only one American dollar. And so when people walk up and down the streets here in the Amazon, they pick up a treat on their way home and this is it. This is actually really delicious. 
but this condensed milk really gives it like a sweet kind of a uh, almost kind of like a frosting taste to this and without the condensed milk I can see that this might be just really kind of bland out of all the foods that I've tried so far in Colombia this one may be my favorite. We're gonna go back and see how they cook traditional Colombian food back here. This is the kitchen. This is where the food is cooked at these traditional roadside restaurants. And this is where they cook the soup, right? Yeah. So she's just warming up the water to start cooking some soup, but no grill. All the food here is cooked over an open fire like this. This is where they cook the steak. Look, we got bananas frying here. And over here, we're preparing the plantains. We're preparing some soup over here. They're just cutting up the potato to put in the soup. All right, so obviously our steak isn't here, so it's probably back at the table. And for our main course, we've got a big old slab of Colombian steak. We've got plantains, which is plantain, but they prepare it in a very unique way. The first they mash it, put it into a patty, then they fry it, then they mash it some more, put it back in the fryer, and serve it as a patty. It's served on a bed of rice with a little salad. And this is really a traditional Colombian dish that you get at these roadside restaurants. So if you come to Colombia and want to order a really thick steak, you're not going to find it. For some reason here in Colombia, they pound it flat. And you can see just how flat that steak is. And I have no idea why they pound their meat so flat in Colombia. If you're Colombian or if you have any idea why they pound their steak and their chicken flat like this, comment below and let me know. But for now, we're gonna try out this steak. All right, so I just chewed that steak for a couple of minutes. I mean, it is very chewy steak. So the way that they prepare steak in Colombia, this really has kind of the consistency of beef jerky. It's kind of difficult to chew, but it's actually really juicy and it seems like it's a contradiction that a flat steak that tastes like beef jerky would be juicy but it is but it's a really interesting it almost has the consistency of liver more than steak it's actually not a bad piece of steak but right now we are going to move on to this fried plantain also pounded flat this is a this is like a total theme here in the colombian amazon of pounding food flat I just really don't understand why they do it. And playing music really, really loud at these restaurants. There's a restaurant across the street over there. There's obviously a restaurant behind me. We've asked them to turn down their music so that I could film this. But it's like you got three restaurants that are like seeing how loud they can play their music. And the louder they play their music, apparently they think it attracts more people. I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna try this plantain. So one of the things that I love about Latin American cuisine are fried plantains. There's different ways to prepare it. Just regular fried plantains, absolutely delicious. When they mash it, turn it into a patty, fry it, then take that, mash it into a patty, refry it, I really think it loses something. But this is just about as Colombian as you can get. These roadside restaurants are all over Southern Colombia. Well, they're all over Colombia, but down here in the Amazon, you know, there's one every kilometer or so, and they all kind of serve food that is unique to the Colombian Amazon here. So from here, we jumped another Colombian tuk-tuk and headed back to the city. Along the bustling riverfront, there's a vibrant market that I'll explore in a future video. And it's here that the bounties of the Amazon River are brought to shore to supply the market and local food stands that dot the shoreline. Everyone eats pretty well in a place like this, and the smell of the dueling grills intoxicates the senses and draws you in. And that was no exception for me. All right, so right here on the street, right in front of a Market. We've got all this good stuff roasting over here. We've got chicken. We've got wolffish, carp. We've got pork ribs over here. Over here, we've got piranha. We've got calabrasa sausage. What was this called again? So basically a sausage made with leftover meat. So let's try this. Let's try the leftover meat. So she's already got the plate prepared with yucca, noodles, beans, and rice. Then she takes the leftover sausage, plops that on a plate. Okay, then we come over here for some ribs. Oh, well, first she's gonna grill the sausage, thankfully. Oh my God. That is like the whole pig. So when it comes to food here in the Amazon, you cannot get any more Amazonian than this. That's the Amazon right over there. 
Here we have sausage called linguisa, made from basically leftover meat, probably from yesterday. And we've got a massive whole half of a pig. Now these are pork ribs that are grilled literally right over there. So to begin with, we're gonna try the linguisa. This is essentially leftover meat sausage. So at the end of the day, when they've got meat left over, they process it, they grind it, they do something to it, and it comes out as the sausage. And I hope that this uh, really isn't, you know, any older than yesterday's meat. But I bet it kind of is. We're gonna try this out. All right, um, there's little pieces of grit inside of there. Not sure that's supposed to be in there. What I think that is, is it's little pieces of bone that got grinded up with the meat and, well, that made it into the sausage, but it really has kind of a pungent flavor to it, like it is old meat. But there's spices in there that kind of cover that up. It's not bad, but this sausage is not as good as Calabrisa sausage, which is another type of sausage that you'll find down here in the Amazon. But right now, we're moving on to these pork ribs which I really hope is pork. So have a look at how nice and juicy and meaty these pork ribs are, and there's something under the table licking my legs. Um, hello? Uh, my friend, that is not pork. These look just about as nice and meaty as you'll find in any restaurant in the United States, but well, we're gonna try this out. Mmm, this is really delicious. Really nice and moist, really nice and meaty. He's put some kind of spices on this that I can't really identify. Probably some spices native to right here in the Amazon. You know, the food here in the Amazon is more unique than any other food that you're gonna find anywhere else in the world. And right now, I've got all these locals staring at me and they're probably thinking, why can't gringos just eat their food and not have a camera on their face? But, well, we gringos like to film ourselves eating. All right, so we're gonna move on from the meat and try out these noodles. Noodles are one of the last foods that I expected to find here in the Amazon, but here they are, right on my fork. We're gonna try this out. What about my hair in my mouth? So, it's very difficult sometimes to distinguish between noodles and hair. Now that I've had both in my mouth, I now know the difference. So the noodles are basically just like any noodles that you're gonna find anywhere else in the world. Nothing really special to them, but they are delicious. So whether it's here at an Amazonian Riverside Grill right here on the street, or whether it's in one of the restaurants in town, Amazonian food is some of the most unique and delicious food you're gonna find anywhere in the world. So guys, if you're hungry for more, there's a video to check out right there. If you're starving for more, there's a playlist to check out right there. And the chainsaw just started again that we've waited a half hour for so that we can finish this video!